welcome to this new short video about extending ex an existing uh, a, a SQL Server failover cluster instance distributed on premises to Azure for disaster recovery. To extend this uh, environment, we will uh, uh, integrate the existing SQL Server failover cluster with um, a always on availability group uh, technology to add a third node uh, with an asynchronous replication for disaster recovery purposes. We'll now go through all the steps needed to uh, implement these solutions and uh, we will work with uh, a SQL 2017 uh, uh, failover cluster instance and with the basic availability groups uh, uh, just to demonstrate that you can easily implement this uh, configuration uh, both with uh, SQL Server standard editions and uh, uh, basic availability group but if you're interested in uh, implementing it with uh, an Enterprise Edition SQL Server and the full uh, availability group uh, uh, feature, uh, you simply have to convert a couple of uh, uh, common letters in PowerShell. Uh, you can find all the um, demo scripts inside my uh, GitHub repository. You can see uh, linked here. We'll now go through how our existing configuration that is composed by a non-premises two-node failover cluster instance with a shared storage on a nice SCSI um, storage higher network and a couple of databases attached to the failover cluster instance. Then we, add pro we have provisioned an additional SQL Server uh, nodes on an Azure virtual machines for the disaster recovery. The uh, two data centers are connected through a VPN tunnel and we have a, a, an Active Directory hybrid configuration in place to support all the configuration. Okay, let's do a quick check of the current configuration. Here we are, we are working with the on-premises cluster uh, with the, as a, a couple of nodes, SQL 1 and SQL 2, and a failover cluster instance on it. Here you can find the shared storage, and on the SQL server side you can find a couple of databases and no availability group configuration. When we move to the DR node, again, no availability group configuration and no databases available. Let's switch to the code. Here you can see the uh, preparation environment command let that provision the SQL VM uh, on Azure. And let's do the same check as before uh, from the code. Here you can find the uh, on-premises configuration on, of the cluster. You can see we're working with a SQL 2017 standard um, instance uh, that has uh, no availability group configuration yet and it hosts a couple of databases. Let's connect to the Azure SQL Server instance and here you can find again a standard edition SQL with uh, no um, always on configuration available. Now, the first step you need to implement uh, while extending your solution to the uh, Azure Virtual Data Center uh, is uh, uh, to uh, provision an Azure Load Balancer that will manage all the uh, clustered IPs for the uh, SQL DR node in Azure. And uh, we will start creating the uh, load balancer with uh, three virtual IPs, one for the uh, clustered uh, um, instance and two for one of the uh, each basic availability group that will um, uh, protect our uh, databases. Here I'm using a script you can find inside the GitHub repository to provision uh, the load balancer configured as uh, I've shown you in the schema. Okay, it's now time to extend our on-premises failover cluster uh, to Azure by adding the third node to it and uh, creating a geographical uh, configuration. Uh, this uh, um, configuration will uh, need to add to uh, an additional IP address that uh, uh, is related to the Azure Virtual Network address space to the um, cluster IP. 
and then we need to remove um, the third node as a possible owner for our on-premises failover cluster instance because the third node won't be involved in the failover cluster instance it will only act as a um, secondary replica for our availability group configuration Okay, let's start adding the third node by installing the uh, failover cluster Windows feature on it and uh, we can then add the third node to the cluster and as you can see here the, ter the third node is there, the SQL DR node is there then we need to uh, map the uh, load balancer cluster the IP we provisioned in Azure to the virtual network name or resource uh, in on premises. Okay, we are not ready to complete our stretched cluster configuration and to provision all the prerequisite to configure and availability groups between the on-premises failover cluster instance and the third node distributed in Azure. And we can uh, go on by uh, checking the cluster configuration. You can see here the, thir the three nodes. We can change the uh, quorum vote for the uh, disaster recovery node to remove it. And then we can uh, remove the uh, SQL DR cluster node as the possible owner with, for our uh, um, failover cluster instance on premises. And that's okay, you can see here the, it is not inside the uh, uh, owner nodes anymore. Then we can enable the availability group feature both for the on-premises uh, uh, instance and then for the uh, disaster recovery instance distributed in Azure. This uh, um, uh, configuration change requires a restart of the service that I've been doing here. Okay, now the on-prem SQL Server is online again with availability group feature enabled. Let's do the same on the DR node now. And let's update the um, um, service account credential on the DR node to be the same we used on the on-premises uh, SQL Server uh, failover cluster instance just to make uh, things uh, simple while establishing the availability group. And OK, the credentials are updated now. We need to restart the um, database service. I'm doing all of this stuff with the DBA tool PowerShell model that is incredibly powerful. Now, I need to create a, a shared folder that will be used to uh, seed our um, secondary uh, replica for uh, uh, always on availability group. I'm enabling uh, the uh, endpoints on our uh, instances, both on premises and uh, on the DR node. We are now ready to provision uh, uh, the availability groups. Since we are working with basic availability groups and we have a couple of databases to protect, we need to uh, uh, prepare two av basic availability groups. Let's do it by using the new DBA availability group command that from the DBA tools model that does hold the heavy lift for you and uh, now I'm establishing the uh, new availability group for the first database and I can uh, reissue the command with updated uh, parameters to establish also the second um, basic availability group. <laughs> 
Now that we have uh, the uh, basic availability groups ready, it's time to provision uh, the availability group listeners. As you can see here in the schema, I'm uh, having them with uh, a couple of IP, each one, one for the um, on-premises network and the one for the DHAR uh, Azure network. The DHAR Azure network is using the IPs I've previously assigned to the uh, uh, internal load balancer uh, because I need to manage them uh, as a clustered IPs in the uh, virtual data center in Azure. We can do it by using the new SQL availability group listener, a common letter from the official SQL Server model. And let's do it for the first availability group listener. And then we need to set the uh, load balancer probe for the uh, clustered IP resource of the uh, availability group listener. And then let's uh, repeat the same steps for the second availability group listener. And again, the probe for the second IP is set here. Now, for demo purposes, I'm uh, changing a couple of parameters related to the um, cluster uh, configuration, like the uh, TTL of uh, the um, DNS record, just to be faster during failover, but this is only for demo purposes. We can now uh, have a look at what we have configured till now. And as you can see here, we have two availability groups uh, defined in the cluster, each one with a couple of IP addresses assigned. And on the SQL Server side, we have a fully working uh, high availability um, groups uh, uh, configuration. Uh, if we go in the dashboard of the availability group one, everything is green. And also this is for the uh, availability group number two. Now let's try to connect through the first uh, uh, availability group uh, uh, listener. As you can see here, I'm trying to ping and to resolve the name of the uh, availability group one and uh, it, it's been resolved as the, with the IP of the on-premises uh, um, data center. And through the listener, I'm able to uh, work with the um, protected databases. I can uh, also check that I'm currently working uh, on a failover cluster and the active node is currently the SQL uh, one node. Let's simulate a failover of the on-premises system. This is a brutal way to do it, but uh, it, it's working and now if I uh, try to re, um, reissue the connection uh, through the availability group uh, listener one you can now see that I'm connected to the second failover cluster node on premises okay it's time to simulate a disaster of our on-premises database. Let's try to see what happens if we completely uh, destroy the on-premises uh, uh, node of our system. Let's brutally turn off our Hyper-V virtual machines for SQL 1 and SQL 2 nodes. And this should simulate a complete uh, fail of our on-premises failover cluster. As you can see here, in a few seconds, our uh, virtual machine are not available uh, anymore. And it remains only the SQL disaster recovery nodes. But since it's the only one cluster node uh, remained, the uh, availability groups uh, uh, went offline because the uh, node itself has not uh, enough cluster quorum votes to stay uh, online, to remain online. So our uh, um, database are currently not available. If we try to ping the uh, availability group listener of, or of our first uh, uh, availability group, it's now not reachable anymore because the availability group is uh, uh, offline.
and as you can see here the database is offline and is not accessible since it's in uh, no recovery currently the SQL DR node is uh, not available for use right now To recover from this disaster, we need to force the failover uh, of the availability groups uh, uh, on the uh, secondary disaster recovery node distributed in Azure. And let's do it. We first need to be sure that the um, cluster service on the DR node is uh, stopped, so we, start, uh, we stop it, and then we can uh, force the uh, cluster service start with the fixed quorum uh, switch. We will need to wait a couple of seconds till the service goes up and then we are ready to forcibly uh, fail over the availability groups uh, uh, through the uh, DHAR node. First availability group uh, has been done and now it's turned for the second uh, availability group. We can now jump on the SQL Server Management Studio and let's have a look to our database that are now online on the SQL DR node and also the availability group configuration uh, has been cleared. Of course, if we open the dashboard, we still can see troubles on the on-premises data center, but the availability group system is now working. If we try to resolve the um, virtual network name of our uh, availability group listeners, it now points to the DHAR IP address that uh, is uh, uh, provisioned by the uh, internal load balancer, and now the IP uh, is reachable. We can now connect through the uh, availability group listener, which maintains obviously the same name it uh, has on-premises. And now we can fully access our databases from there. As you can see here, the databases are alive. And if we try to check on uh, which cluster node are we running, uh, the query doesn't return any record since we are not running on a failover cluster uh, uh, instance node here. We are on the disaster recovery Azure node that is a standalone uh, SQL Server instance and this is its SQL Server name. And so that's all. I've just demonstrated to you how easy it is to extend an existing failover cluster instances uh, to Azure for DR purposes. And uh, uh, as you have seen, uh, you, uh, this is a, um, an operation that you can uh, complete with a minimal downtime for your on-premises uh, SQL Server instance. Uh, now, I can encourage you to um, uh, try uh, my scripts uh, in a lab environment and uh, if you need any clarification, feel free to contact me. Let's see you at the next event. Bye-bye.